Morning, church. Morning. Glory be unto God. The Lord of lords, the King of kings. Yes, yes. Like the sun said this morning, yes. he smiled on us. Yes. He's been good to yes. us. He woke us up this morning. He, he gave us a, a, a good portion of our mind this morning. Yes. That, ought to be, that ought to be enough to give him a hand praise yes. this morning. You, enough to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah unto hallelujah. you, Lord. This morning's scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 34. Will everyone rise in the, in the reverence to the reading of God's holy word? And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which also, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever should eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with this world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if a man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord have a blessing for the readers and the hearers and the doers of his mighty word. Father God, we come right now in the most precious name of Jesus, Father, asking forgiveness for anything that we may have done, said, or thought that wasn't pleasing to you, Father. Father, we come right now, Father, thanking you for this day, a day that wasn't promised. But you saw fit to give it to us anyway, Father. Father, we come right now this morning, Father, lifting this service up to you, Father, that you would have it to be what you would have to be, Father. Father, we want to welcome in the Holy Spirit right now, Father, the rule and super rule over this service this morning, Father. Father, we continue to lift the pastor up to you, Father. Continue to lay him down in the deep treasures of your word, Father. Give him a word from on high this morning, Father, that someone may come asking, what must they do to be saved, Father? These and all prayers we pray in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to be in the house of prayer one more time. Hallelujah. The Lord has spared our lives and blessed us to be able to come today. So we just want to give him praise honor and glory, all that he deserves. So we ask you to join in and help us sing this morning. How great is our God? Yeah. It's our God. Yeah. I don't know about you, but he's my father. Yeah. So that makes him our God. Hallelujah. How great Oh, we'll 
to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love that's love Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love that's To Calvary to save a wretch like you and me, that's love. That's love. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me.
church, can you think of any greater love than the love of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah! His love is just sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Greater love. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. These tears is just full of joy. God has been so good to us. God has blessed us with a pastor who has an unwavering commitment to all of us and a beautiful first lady that stands by his side. I hope that when you walked in this morning, you felt welcome and you felt the spirit. We've been praying, church. We've been praying, we've been praying, we've been praying. But I would be remiss if I first didn't say, giving all honor to God, who is the head of my life. I would be nothing without my Savior, Jesus Christ. I told I wasn't going to cry, then they messed me up with that song. (laughs) They took it, they took it back, they took it back. (laughs) Hold the mic, okay. That's the first thing my pastor uncle said, make sure y'all speak in the mic. (laughs) But I'm just so full of joy and gratefulness. I want to give honor to our pastor, my pastor, my pastor, uncle, Pastor Garrett. I want to give honor to our first lady, my first lady auntie. To any ministers that may be in the building, God bless you. To the deacons and deaconess, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, you may know me by face, but I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Sister Tally Ogin, and this is my cousin and co-chair, Sister D. Savage. And we have been working really hard for over a year, yeah. over a year, planning and planning and planning to make sure that all things were done decent and in order. Musicians, God bless you. Welcome to the family. Praise team. God bless you. Thank you. This month, we are celebrating our pastor's seventh anniversary. Yes. Our theme is a pastor serving God's people is sweeter than honey. And if you ever had some good, good honey, you know, it's just like, mmm. But our theme is grounded in scripture because we are a biblically sound church. And our scripture is coming from Psalms 119, 103, and it reads, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. We are going to have a good, good time this month. I believe it. I'm claiming it because Jesus is omnipresent. He already here. He's already decided on the program. I got a program, but God can take it a whole nother direction. And I want us to be agile and flexible and patient with one another while we walk through this next month together. But for today, I want to thank our deacons for the beautiful devotion and praise team. Thank you again. Um, we're going to have some announcements by our youth. Uh, is it her direct? She's one of the directors. Sister Aisha, you'll come up after us. And then we have an opportunity for every Sunday. We've identified some ministries who will get an opportunity to share a special thank you, gratitude to our pastor and first lady. For today, we're asking for the motherboard to come up. Housekeeping, we're asking for like two minutes. Um, asking that you speak in the mic, and that we're going to also have our offering today, but we're doing the offering a little bit different. So we're used to dropping it in the box, and you probably like, where's the box at? Well, we're going to try something different this month where we're going to have our ushers and deacons make sure that we pass the basket and we'll have an offering. We are asking for a sacrificial offering. We're asking because we want to teach the babies that giving is a part of worship, So we asking our young folks from ages 1 to uh, 10 to give 7 cents. For our teenagers, we asking for $17. So you might need to do some chores, put the TikTok down and do something around the house so you can make your $17. And then we asking for our season members 18 above. We're asking for each member to give a sacrificial offering of $70. But I want to say this. 
I'm asking for $70, but if your sacrificial offering is five on it, 10 on it, 20 on it, that's good. If you don't have it, your mere presence is enough. So please do not let the offering get in the way, okay? And then we're going to have our praise team come, and then Pastor, he get one more time to go behind the sacred desk, and then we're going to give him a break for the month because we have some awesome speakers of God that are coming this month. We'll have our invitation, and then we'll wrap up in our traditional first um, service. We'll have communion, and then we'll close with the benediction, benediction. Excuse me. All minds are clear. Thank you, and God bless you. And I just hope that lives is changed, souls are saved this month, and that even if you're a member and you just need to get things right, you need to do a control, alt, delete, reset in Jesus' name. I pray before you in the name of Jesus that you will give your life over and you'll rededicate your commitment and consistency to God's work. Amen. Good morning, church. Sorry you had to wait on me. <laughs> um, so I'm here to make an announcement about our health and wellness. So we, as you know, a lot of us are trying to be in the best shapes of our lives and trying to be as healthy as we can be to live as long as we can for our kids, for our grandkids, for ourselves, and just to respect our body as our temples. So with one of those things, we're going to be, um, I'm president of the uh, Children's Church of the Youth Department. And so we're going to be incorporating a lot of those aspects into activities that the children do. One of those, um, one of the activities that's coming up really soon is going to be a 5K that I am hosting through an organization called Tracy African American Association. A lot of us are part of that organization already that are members of this church. Um, and if not, it's an opportunity to join us, to socialize. We do everything in the name of God and also in the name of health and wellness as well. And um, the Tracy African American Association, we raise money for scholarships for the Tracy students. So everything is geared towards providing a scholarship towards high school students. And that is for vocational as well as for college. Um, so that is what we're raising money for. I would like to, um, I have gotten permission, and I would like to all, always include people of Christ when we are having activities. And so our first one is coming up, and it's going to be April 29th. If you cannot or choose not to participate in our Walk Run 5K, you're more than welcome to come out and just socialize with us. So it's going to be at the Tracy Sports Complex again on April 29th. Um, next week in our bulletin will be the registration forms where you can access the registration forms. And also on our bulletin out here, um, it, we have the informational flyer. So if you are interested, please let me know. Um, please let anyone know. They'll get me your information, and we'll make, I'll make sure that you get all the necessary paperwork. Um, and if you just want to join us, come out and do that too. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, one more thing. So um, we are doing a fundraising series, if you will, it's just two Sundays. But beginning the 16th, we are doing a, um, uh, oh, I have it backwards. Oh, we're doing a craft sale. So after church on the on April 16th, we'll have craft sale, a craft sale. So we'll have different crafts that our um, that our youth have helped make. Everything is like handmade by us. And then on the 23rd, April 23rd, we are having a bake sale. So that is, the bake sale is kind of the umbrella name, but we'll have healthy snacks as well as some other things, <laughs> some other things to um, 
some other vittles and treats, if you will. So um, please come with cash and uh, <laughs> be prepared to support our, our youth. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord, saints. First, I give honor to our uncle, who, my, my Lord, who is the head of my life. And I just thank God for being here today and to celebrate this beautiful day. Uh, I'm going to start in a minute, but we got 10 minutes. Okay, hold it for me, please. Um, I have something here for, from the, I'm the first president of the Mother Award, and we, I wanted to read this little thing to Pastor. Uh, it's this to our pastor and wife. That sounds a lot like the two of you. Hope you know how, what a blessing you are and how much you're appreciated. The Mother's Board of POC. And give me, give me a little change. This and this is for the, the wife. You know, she liked that dog over there. So this one says, I love you. See the dog? It's all for her. And Pastor, you know, we, are, we know that you, we all love you. But sometimes your wife is in the, you know, in the, in the dark. Not, uh, some of them don't know if that's your wife. So I just want to have a little tribute to her, if you don't mind. Okay, to our pastor and wife. It takes a special woman to be a pastor's wife. For your life is not simple and you task it is easy. You stand behind our faithful pastor to be. You smile and pray with him as he teaches and guides us. You're always there as a faithful friend to offer a word of encouragement with a beautiful smile. With a knock at the door and a phone ringing at dinner time, you are prepared to meet the challenges that lies before, before you, uh, your husband. You know him well. You encourage him both day and night. You're often in the shadow, but love and compassion shines there. You're gloriously appreciated as an enhancement of life. Sister Carletta Garrett, you are, not, you are just a queen. You're the pastor's wife.
that he always has all sufficiency in all things. Yes. We are bound to every good work. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come this morning in the precious name of Jesus. You are our God and there is none like you. You're an awesome God. You are a strong tower, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. You are a good God. Lord, you are our shepherd. Because you are a shepherd, we shall not want. It is you that lead and guide and protect us. And that we say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the air that we breathe. Because it's you that brings life, eternal life, the abundant life, life everlasting. And we say, thank you, Lord. For this day that you have made, and Lord, we rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank you, Lord, for another day's journey, and we're glad about it. It was you that touched us early this morning, Lord, with a finger of love. Lord, and we opened up our eyes, and we still had a roof over our head and a floor underneath our feet. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. Lord, you have been good to us, better than we've been to ourselves. But Lord, we want to first say thank you for the forgiveness of sin, realizing that all have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. We've all have missed the mark. We've been some places we said some things, we entertained some thoughts that were not right in your sight. But Lord, you said, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we just want to thank you again for being a God that hears and answers prayers. Lord, I first want to thank you for our musicians this morning. Hallelujah. You heard our prayers and you answered our prayers. And Lord, you sent us some musicians, Lord, with a heart for servitude. A heart for a ministry, uh, not just for a paycheck, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our young people, our, our children this morning, Lord. Our young people that are leading us in worship, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that they are leading us with their gifts, Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord, that you would cover our young people, cover our children with your love and with your divine protection, Lord. Lord, we pray for our children, Lord, that you would keep them safe from traffickers, keep them safe from bullies, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord, from those that were going to schools with guns and killing our young children, Lord. Lord, would you build a fence around them and keep them safe, Heavenly Father. Lord, we're praying for families this morning. Somebody had to bury their child, Lord. Someone had to bury their loved one. Someone is mourning this morning, Lord. I thank you that you're omnipresence, that you are everywhere in the same place. Would you comfort them? Speak like only you can, Lord. Praying for our children, Lord, that They'll have shelter, Lord, and food to eat, clean water to drink, Lord. Lord, we need your peace this morning. Lord, we need that peace that only that you can give, Lord. We ask for that peace that would rule in our hearts and rule in our minds, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would deliver us, Lord, from mindset, thoughts, and patterns, and strongholds, Lord, that want to keep us in cycles of confusion and chaos, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, that you will remove individuals and issues from our lives and from our relationships that would disturb our peace of mind. We need peace, Lord. Peace in our country, Lord. Peace in our cities. Peace in our neighborhoods, Lord. We need peace in our homes, Lord. Peace in our marriages right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Only that peace that you can give, Lord, that internal peace. Lord, we want that peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding, Lord. We realize it's with your healing that we will have peace. Lord, you said if your people who are called by your name, Lord, if we would just humble ourselves, Lord, and if we would pray, Lord, if we would seek your face, Lord, if we would turn from our wicked ways, and you would hear from heaven, Lord, and forgive us of our sins and heal our hand, lands, Lord. Lord, I pray right over this POC family. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to commune with us. Lord, that you would walk with us, that you would guide us right now, Lord. Praying for every household represented here this morning, Lord. Thank you that you are God that don't look on the outside, but you look at our hearts. Lord, we're here for one thing or another, Lord. Those that are struggling and those that had to press their way to worship this one. Hell hounds on their tails, Lord. But Lord, they're here right now. Holy Spirit, would you minister to them like only you can, Lord? We're praying for every auxiliary, every department that is open in your name, Lord. Giving you glory, Lord. Lord, we're praying for those that are in the hospital room, those behind prison bars, Lord. Will you stop on by? and remind them you said you would never leave them, nor would you ever forsake them, Lord. And Lord, that all that we say and that all that we do today is to give you glory, Lord. And right now, Lord, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. What day is this? And I will. And I'll let. Why? Because he will keep you in perfect peace. Your mind is stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. Trust in the Lord Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Good morning to all. Amen. If we have any visitors here, first time visitors, amen. You are welcome in this place. Amen. Amen. You are welcome. No pressure. You don't have to stand. You don't have to wave your hand. I see you. God bless you. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just so full this morning. I mean, I thank God. Like I said, he hears and answers prayers. Amen. Amen. And realizing uh, yes is an answer to prayer. No is an answer to prayer. You looking at my notes? <laughs> And wait is also an answer to prayer. But you know what? The day that wait, I wish I had some Bible readers here this morning. Those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's renewing my strength every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to hold you. Amen. Amen. Did you bring your Bibles this morning? Where, where, bring your Bible. Don't play with me. Amen. Where your Bible at? Amen. Amen. You left it in the car. All right. It's all right. Hey, hey, hey. Come on now. Amen. It's a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. It's Philippians, book, familiar passage of scripture coming from Philippians. Chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. Amen. God bless the Robinson family. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord have mercy. I, I feel like shouting already. Amen. Glory. I can't wait on y'all. Amen. I, I feel something moving in my big toe. Whew. Amen. Come on, y'all know the drill. You got scripture, please stand. Amen. For the reading of God's word. Amen. Giving reverence to his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3. I'll uh, be reading verse 10. If you didn't bring your Bible, that uh, scripture would be on the screen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you're there, say amen. amen. Can we read? And it says what? Amen. That's plenty right there. Amen. I just want to tag this text with your prayers, but above all, with God's presence. Lord. I want to be a Christian. May be seated. Lord, I want to be a Christian. And I don't want to be a killjoy, but be careful what you ask for. Lord, I want to be a Christian. A desire to know Christ is not just to know about him. 
it, it is to have a personal, private relationship with him. To, to know Jesus requires intimacy. Intimacy and an understanding that there can be both rewards and regrets from an intimacy with another person. This experience, this encounter with Christ is so tremendous that it would transform your life that I may know him. Now, many know him as Savior. Yes, Jesus came and he, he healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind and the lame was able to walk. The deaf were able to hear. Yes, and he even raised some folks from the grave. But when you want to know him as Lord, you must understand that Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born to die that, so we can live. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Now, in order for you to get the power of the resurrection, you have to endure the grief of the crucifixion. To live is Christ. To die is gain. Look, 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 now, Easter's right around the corner. I know I'm a little early, but a lot of folks want to show up for Easter. But none of us wants to have the involvement of the pain of Good Friday. Many, many, many may say, I came in for the resurrection part. But I didn't want to buy into the crucifixion principle. But in fact, if you are going to be a Christian, before you can resurrect, you have to be crucified. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. But all of you that call yourself Christians, you are saying to the world that I am Christ-like. Christian, I'm Christ-like, right? But understand this, I am not just like him in resurrection, but I'm also like him in my sufferings. You want to be a Christian? Count the cost. Oh, it's going to cost you. you that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Oh, and the fellowship of his suffering. Jesus was born to die. And if you want to be a Christian, if you really want to know him, you got to understand this, that you are born to go through the pain that you're going through. You are born to go to the situations and, and circumstances. That's how you know you're a Christian. That's how you know you are a Christian, that trial that you're going through right now. You were born for this. This situation that was set up to kill you, you were born for this. The demons, that devil that is on your back, you were born for this. This is how you know I was born for this because I didn't die in my mess. I wish I could make it plain. Why? Because Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. I want to be a Christian. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah? I forgot to give y'all the reference scripture, don't y'all? In Matthew 26, at verse 39, we know that it says that Jesus, he went a little farther and he fell on his face. And he prayed and he said, oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless. He said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus understood this. 
he understood that for him to go get to it, he'd have to go through it. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he had to weigh out his options. He said, if you would take this cup from me. So Jesus, he comes to himself. He said, let not my will, but your will be done. Oh, you, you want to be a Christian? You got to understand that many of us, we're going to have our own garden of Gethsemane in our lives. And when God shares with us, you got to suffer. Many of us, we'll pour the cup out. Rather than drink it, you want to be a Christian, you have to say, not my will, but your will be done. I wish I had some real believers in here that will say, nevertheless, 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 it's not easy, but nevertheless, it, it may not be comfortable, but nevertheless, it's not pleasant what I'm going through, but nevertheless, not my will, but nevertheless, thy will be done. That I may know him, not know about him, but have an intimate relationship with him. And not just the power of his resurrection, but the fellowship of his suffering. He spoke, Jesus said, the cup, the cup represents suffering. And everybody wants to know Jesus and his power. Uh -huh. But do you want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings? Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship means to have in common or a sharing. It's a partnership or it is an exchange. Jesus, our Savior, he came to suffer for our sins on the cross. The Bible says he was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Yes, yes. We could never enter into suffering the same way that Jesus suffered on that cross. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we can never endure the suffering or go through the suffering what Jesus went through. But understand this. It's not until you've gone through some sufferings, not until you've gone through suffering, and that's when you know what Jesus felt. You're going to have to understand to go get to it. You've got to go through it. Uh huh. And when you get to the place that you understand what Christ feels to have people to betray you. It's when you get to the place that you understand what Christ feels when you try to do good and is spoken evil of. It's not until you understand what Christ feels when people in the church don't want to see you profit. It is not till you understand what Christ feels for people to lie on you. When you finally get to that understanding, then you'll know what it means. To be a Christian, you will understand that being a Christian, you're going to suffer. But you can't quit. <laughs> you want to be a Christian, you're going to suffer. You can't quit. You're going to feel the pain. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet, he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shears are done. And he opened not his mouth. He didn't say, I quit. I'm leaving. You make me sick. He opened not his mouth. That I, I got to make it personal, that I may know him. 
What about you? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. To be conformable, to be conformed means to be pressed into a mold, to pressed into a mold, to an image and a likeness of. I want to know him being conformed unto his death. I, I want to be pressed into a mold, and I want to be pressed into the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. And when you get to that place, then you'll understand that that's when you enter into God's perfect will. When we enter into his perfect will, we'll stop chasing the kingdom and start chasing the king. His perfect will. In his perfect will, you're going to have to pick up your own cross. In his perfect will, you're going to have to deny self. In his perfect will, you're going to have to die to self. In his perfect will, you're going to have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things shall be added unto you. You want to be in his perfect will? I often ask the question, the fellowship of his suffering. Why did he die the way that he died for me? Why did he die the way that he died for me? Jesus was crucified. Understand the Romans did not event crucifixion. It was invented by the Persians and the Greek. Amen. The Romans did not event crucifixion, but they perfected it. They perfected it to an art form. It was a form of torture. And it was designed to produce a slow death with maximum pain and suffering. Crucifixion. It was one of the most disgraceful and cruel methods of execution. Crucifixion. It was a brutality unmatched. A horror worse than being burned alive. Crucifixion. Those that were crucified, the victims of this crucifixion, they usually didn't die for two to three days. While they hung on that cross with their wounds open and, and their bleeding, that insects would come and light on those wounds and on their eyes and insects with light on their noses. And while the insects are there, birds of prey would come and pick at the insects. But understand this, before they would crucify you, they'd play games with you, taunting games, punching games. They play pulling games, kicking games. Before the crucifixion, Jesus stood before the Sanhedrin council. He was led from judgment hall to judgment hall. Jesus was lied on and he was found guilty of blasphemy. And the guards, they took Jesus and they blindfolded him. They spit on him. They pulled the hairs out of his beard. They put Jesus in the middle of a circle, blindfolded, and each one would take their hand and beat Jesus. It said, prophesy, who hit you? And another one would hit him and say, prophesy, who hit you? And again and again and again, all night long, they took Jesus and they hung him on the whipping post. And they began to whip him with the cat of nine tails, it was called. Nine leather straps of various lengths with 
They were iron ball, balls on there and sharp pieces of sheep bone that were tied to the end. And as they whipped Jesus, the sheep bones were cut into his skin and to the subcutaneous tissue as they dug in and pulled the flesh out. And they would continue to flog Jesus and the laceration would tear into the underlining skeletal muscles. And it would produce ribbons of bleeding flesh. Most men would have died on the whipping post. Jesus had to go through it to get to it. He couldn't die there. He had to go to Calvary, Golgotha, the place of skull. They took my rock and they put him on a rock, lied him down on a rock and put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. But I could hear an angel say, go ahead on, nail his hands. Go ahead on, nail his feet. But don't you lift him up. Because he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men, all women, all boys and girls unto me. But I said, for you to know him, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they put the nails in his hand and they hung him on a tree? Were you there when they pierced him in his side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom? Were you there when the centurion said, truly, truly, this is the Son of God? Were you there when Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lama, 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 Shabbat to me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Were you there when they buried him in the tomb? Were you there that three days later he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand? Were you there? Were you there? Sometime my soul begins to tremble. My soul begins to tremble and I feel like shouting, glory. Glory, glory, glory that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Were you there? An intimate relationship with Jesus. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian. But understand the key to Christian life is not you living in it, but Jesus living through you. Mm -hmm. What makes Christianity so unique? Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. It's not a Sunday morning experience. It is a daily relationship that I have with the Lord. That I may know him. Not just know about him. That's why Paul said that his goal is to know him. Having that passion of knowing Jesus. My prayer right now, right here, right now, that there may be someone out there that saying in their heart, I want to know him. I want an intimate relationship with him. Not, not just the power of his resurrection, not just on Easter morning. I, I, I want to know is more than just being victorious. It's more than being just the head and not the tail. It's more than I can do all things to Christ. Yes, we, we say these scriptures, but are we living them? Yeah. 
I want to know him. Is that your desire? Is that is that is that your desire to know him? Not no look, mama, daddy, they knew. But what about your personal relationship this morning? Don't wait. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. And he's speaking to your heart. Let not your heart be hardened. He's calling your name this morning. If you confess the Lord Jesus and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, he will save you right now. Is there one this morning? Is there one to say, I want to know him? I want to have fellowship with him. I, I want to commune with him. I messed up. I've done wrong. Will Lord cleanse me? Renew me in the right spirit. He knows your heart. Is there one you come right now saying, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I, I, I want to go home to heaven. Mama's there. Daddy's there. Grandma, grandma. They're there, but I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus for myself. Is there one? The door of the church is open. Come right now. Is there one? Come right now. Saying, I, I want to be saved. I want to be made whole. Then it may be someone you say, well, I'm already saved. But have you been baptized? Baptism is the first step to obedience. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward manifestation that I'm born again. I'm born again. Have you been baptized? Come right now. We will baptize you here. We, we'll baptize you here. Come right now. Is there one? I want to be saved. I want to be baptized. Come, come right now. Come, come to Jesus. Now, you, you may say, well, I'm saved. I've been baptized. But do you have a church home? We welcome you here to People of Christ Missionary Baptist Church. We welcome you here. You are welcome in this place. You and your baggage. Come, come to Jesus. Where are you? Is there one? Is, is there one? You're in need of a church home. You're welcome here. But understand this, that we are not a perfect church. No, we're not. Why? Because I, I'm not a perfect pastor. But we serve a perfect God. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. There may be somebody that's online that's watching us, and you can reach us at area code 209 833 7258 and we will receive you amen amen come 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 while the blood is still flowing warm through your veins don't put off tomorrow what you can take care of today this is the day this is the day tomorrow's not promised to us come on come on come on come on come on yes yes Yes. All you have to say is yes. Just say yes, Lord. Is there one to say yes, Lord? That you will surrender and that you will humble yourself to him. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Is there one? 
Is there one? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Is there one? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, say amen. amen. Let us let us prepare ourselves. We're continuing to worship. Communion is worship. We're going to continue to worship a partaking in the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. 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 First Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. Has everyone been served? Has anyone been omitted? Has anyone been omitted? There's one. There's one. Anyone been omitted? There's two. Has anyone been omitted? For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the same night which Jesus betrayed, he took bread, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. He's coming back, y'all. He's coming back. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man, let a woman, examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It was on a Thursday night in the upper room where Jesus and his 11 disciples were sitting at the table. And there was an aura in the room. Because right before Jesus said, one of you will betray me. That's when Judas got up and left. Jesus' 11 disciples, Jesus said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me. But before we do, take a time, a little time out and examine yourself. Before you partake of the Lord's Supper, examine yourself. Now understand, none of us are worthy within ourselves. This is only Jesus that makes us worthy. But we got some stuff going on in us that we need to come before the Lord. Take a little time out and examine yourself. Get yourself right. 
with the Lord. This is my body. Take, eat, and remember to me. After that manner also, he took the cup. This is my blood that was shed for you of a new covenant. Take, drink ye all of it, and remember it to me. After that manner, they sung a hymn. I know it was the blood. Church, say amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. 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 Um, we have a beautiful, is that called a backdrop? Thank you. Yep, yep. Don't let me be ignorant all my life. And if you have a little time, if you can take a picture by the backdrop, amen. And I, I would like mothers, boy, mothers, would y'all bless me taking a picture with me? Amen. Amen. And my, my wife, too. I, I'm married. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you all for coming. Amen. As uh, thank uh, sister, my niece, my favorite niece. Sister Tally, amen. Amen. My daughter, Dijanae, amen. Amen for orchestrating this month. Amen. Look, we only going to go higher. I'm, look, <laughs> we're going to go higher, amen. I ask all of you, would you would come on back, amen, next week, amen. Eat Resurrection Sunday, amen. Amen. I couldn't wait. I had to get mine out now. Hallelujah. Uh, Reverend Dr. Janice Jones will be here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, that, that ain't for you. Well, third Sunday, my nephew coming in, Reverend Dwayne Hawkins. Amen. Look, amen. All you young folks, amen. In, invite your, your uh, uh, is it homies? Your, uh, friends. Okay. Your peeps. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on out. And uh, look, what I, what I love about him, like I said, he's 42, right? But he's been preaching since he's, he was 19. Yeah. Amen. I, I love his preaching. He got a different flavor, right? I'm telling you, you want to come on out and be a witness. Hey, we're going to have a wonderful time that uh, third Sunday. Amen. And then 
uh, for us mature folks. Fourth Sunday, like a little hooping. Amen. Come on now. Look, well, before he hoop, he's going to give you the scoop. <laughs> Amen, man. Amen. Pastor C.W. Parker coming in for Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. You ready? Come on. And uh, fifth Sunday, my pastor, uh, uh, Reverend Frank Darby. Amen. A teacher of the word. Look, you're going to get some of everything this month. And we're just going to keep going higher and higher. And I know some say, how could that be? Show up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God bless. And next week, our Easter play, I can't wait. I can't wait. Our young people, amen. Look, I can't wait till they come on up. Here they come right now. Look, I know spoken to existence. Oh, Lord, I can't wait. <clears throat> amen. That my, that my amen corner right there. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, if you have time, you know, a little patience. Amen. Uh, uh, take a little uh, picture if you can. Amen. Amen. Will you stand for our benediction, please? Amen. Stand for our benediction. After uh, our benediction, I ask that you be seated. You'll be in the hands of the ushers, amen, <clears throat> to usher you out, amen. God is so good. I, just, I thank God, amen. I thank God how he's moving in this way. And he ain't through with us yet. No, oh, he's not. No, no, no. Let's look unto the hills which come at our help. Our help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be both glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, may we all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.